in this video we're going to recreate a roundabout I had created before. So this is a place somewhere in Nairobi, uh, the east side of Nairobi. And within an estate, there's a junction where I decided to put up a, a roundabout. So this is the roundabout I created. And this is the first limb, second limb, and the third limb. And these are their uh, profiles. So profile one is for this limb, this is for that limb, and then profile three for the other limb. So we're going uh, to learn about how to create a simple roundabout, and we're going to recreate the one I just created. So I go to the copy I made, and then I deleted all the corridors that had been created. And here I just show you the geotiff that I used to create the surface with. So this geotiff is an elevation DEM, which I got from Earthmap. I just downloaded it through creating a polyline here and then getting that data under the elevation data in Earthmap website. So I got this, this geotiff, which I used to create the surface here which I called a state. And as you can see under definition, um, you can see this is a DM file that I created. This is the DM file that I downloaded and I used to create that surface. Okay, so let's create the profiles. Let's start by creating the profiles. So I select this alignment and then I click on surface profile. And here I add it's down here, then I draw the profile, I create profile. I place it there as a first profile, representing the existing surface, uh, which I created from this DM. Then I'll create the second profile. Surface profile, add the data down here, I draw it in profile view, then I create a profile view. I can move it downwards so that the it does not overlap with the other one. Then I create the final profile by clicking there. Then I go to surface profile. I add the profile, draw in profile view, create profile view, and I place it there. Now I don't want to show these labels on my profile. So what do I do? I click on the profile. I right click and go to edit labels. And then I remove those labels. Normally you'd want to show those labels on a design profile. This is a surface profile. So they are they are unnecessary and therefore I remove them. I edit this one as well. I click X, I apply, okay. And the final one, I do the same. Sorry, I clicked on the profile view. Click on the profile. Edit labels. Then you remove all those labels. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to create the corridor for my three limbs. So how do I do that? First of all, I need an assembly. And I also need uh, the design profiles for, this, for these three surface profiles. So first, let's start by creating the design profiles. So I go to the Home tab, Profiles, and then I go to Profile Creation Tools. And then I'm prompted to select a profile. I select the first one and I leave everything at default because the naming will be as per the uh, parent alignment and it will be s s um, it will have a, not a suffix but a prefix of PGL. So that's okay. Click OK and then I get this profile layout toolbar. Here I'm going to create uh, the profile with tangents and curves. So I just click there and then I go to the first point, snap to the end point there. And then I enter. Then I create another profile for the second, for the second surface profile. It's named properly and then it will be named according to the prefix and that alignment name. So I, I'm okay with that. I select the same, and then I draw the profile. Then I do the final one, 
profile creation tools. I'm prompted to select the profile view to create the profile on. And that's the one. I click OK. Then I draw the profile. This is the final ground profile. And then I enter. So what is most important is that these three points where they meet, they have the same elevation. So this profile starts from here to here. And then this second one starts from here to here. So this is the start point for this, but this is the end point for this one. And then this one starts from here to here. So this is the start point for this. So this end point should conform with the start point of this other one. So this end point elevation should conform with the start point of this, which is 1623.717, which is the same as this, 1623.717. And it should also conform with the start point of the third limb. Okay. So once that is done, uh, we have the profiles and the alignments for creating our corridors, or rather our corridor, which will have different baselines. So what do we do now? We go and create our corridor. So I go to corridor up there, and then I click on corridor. It will be called CR1 or something, or CR-corridor first baseline, that's okay. Um, and I want to start with this first alignment and the first profile that was created, and then the assembly. So wait, we did not create an assembly. So let me bring in an assembly first. We go to our tool palettes here, and there's an assembly that is already saved here. So I bring it in and place it there. So this is the assembly we are going to use to create our corridor. So again, I go back to corridor, click corridor. And here we did not have an assembly, so I pick the assembly that we've just brought in. And then the target surface is the estate surface. Once everything is set up, I just click OK. And there we go. We have the we have the the corridor. We build it. Click OK, and we'll be able to see the corridor. There you go. That's the first limb of the corridor. So let's let's also create a corridor for this section and for this one. So I'll go to this first corridor and then I add baselines. I right click and go to corridor properties. And here within the parameters tab, I will add a baseline and it will be an alignment and a profile. Alignment two, okay. And here the vertical profile is the profile two, which is okay. Then we'll add a region and we'll select assembly two as the assembly. So there you go, you can see the assembly there. Then I add the third baseline, which will be for alignment three. Okay, and then the vertical baseline will be profile three. Okay, again, and then I add a region, which will also have the row three assembly. Once that is up in the corridor of D, you view it. So that's how it looks like. Now what I want to do here is to is to separate these baselines here. So what I can do, I can go back to corridor properties. Like for this, um, this start assembly, we can dictate where it starts. So let me bring it somewhere here. And then this one, oh, sorry, this one, uh, I take it somewhere there. And then this final one, and then I apply it how that looks like. Sorry, did not apply. Let's try again. So let's, first of all, let me do it manually now. Let me start with this. Then I go to the next one. Okay. 
it seems it was overlapping with the other one. And then this one, I bring it here. So let me bring it back here. Bring this close. So something I did not do is to set up the targets for the for the two limbs. So these two limbs, as you can see, do not have targets. So let's give them targets. I'll go to again corridor properties and assign targets. Say targets for all surfaces. So now they they are targeting the the state surface. So what I want to do is to create a top surface, and then here at the junctions we'll create um, a proper roundabout. Currently we just have these limbs, then we'll create a proper roundabout. For now let's create a surface. So how do we create a surface? You Click on that, go to corridor properties, and then you go to the surfaces tab. I want to create a top on link surface. So I add, I first of all create the surface, and then I add the definition. I add those top links as break lines. Maybe not, and then I add a boundary. And then I apply. And there you see the the surface that we've just created. All right. Then I'll put that surface to not display. You see why we need the surface at some point. Surface properties. I'll also put it to not display. Okay. Now we are ready to place our, our roundabout. So let me, let me do it, let me do it, let me place it around the boat. So I'll use a very simple way of doing it. So I'll go to vehicle tracking, and then I'll add the round about. And I'll go to the British round about, and pick the compact round about of less than 40 miles per hour. So that's the one I'll choose, and then I proceed. So do I want to use it as the, as the default roundabout? No. So these are the standards for the roundabout I've just picked. And this is the minimum diameter, and this is the maximum diameter that we can pick. So we leave them at default. So here for the existing surface, this is where I want to pick the estate, and then this is the surface we, we created. And then I want to project that roundabout onto this final surface that we created. That's why we created that surface. And then I click OK. Once I'm cool with those parameters, and then I place the roundabout at this junction here. I can turn on snaps so that I place it accurately. And once that is placed, we are prompted to select the line defining the new access road. So I start with the first limb here. And here are the parameters for the limb. So approach, lane one is 3.5 meters. That is okay, according to uh, Kenyan standards. Then the minimum, the maximum uh, window or limits, this is within our limits. For, lane, lane, for the departing lane also, within our limits. And then I click okay. And I'm prompted to select the line defining the new access road. And then I select the second limb or the second arm which possesses the same parameters. Click OK. Then I'm prompted to select the final uh, arm or limb. And then I click OK. And now I can click Enter, since we do not have any other limb. And currently, the roundabout is being created. Wait a moment for it to be completely created.
There we go. So a surface is automatically created for the roundabout. A top surface, so I don't want to see it. Let me just turn it off for now. Also go to surface properties and put it to no display. Click OK. And here we have our roundabout. But now I want to edit edit this, this corridor so that this region starts from the end of the roundabout. So I place it there first. Let's wait for it to finish calculating. The other limb, I do the same for the other limb. And then this limb. So I bring it closer. So I, let me put off Osnap. Bring it closer again. Bring this closer as well. And then let me change this corset style to, to match these limbs. So now their, their display is the same. And I can add islands here, here, and here. So here at the roundabout tab or panel, I can add a splitter island. Select the roundabout, and then here you see the X marker there. That that roundabout has been added. Then I add an island there, and I add the final one here. I escape. and there we go. We have our beautiful roundabout. And that's how to create around about in a very simple way. So kindly hit the like button if you like it and don't forget to subscribe.